Hello, I'm Steve Olson, the Manager of Training Services for Mesa. In this video, I'd like to share how to add some automation to your design by linking your inventor parameters to an Excel file. In this example, I have a basically a footer subassembly that's a plate, a tube, and then a larger post or tube. And I have a handful of parameters that are going to drive this design or, or this, this unit here. And if I jump over to Excel, you can see I have something to divide the width of the plate at the bottom. And then the main post, its width, length, and height. And then obviously the tube that then gets welded to the actual plate at the bottom needs to properly fit around that post. So what I can do is I can link each of these three files to that Excel file and then basically pair those parameters up with the ones that drive the design. So let me jump into this plate here. This one's probably the easiest one. So if I open this one up, what I have right now is I have a parameter called plate width, which is five inches. And then basically to make this thing square, the other di dimension then uses plate width as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to the link. You will see that I'll have the ability of linking to either an Excel file or an inventor file. I'll go to an Excel file. Here's my footer parameters Excel. When I'm at this point, though, real quickly, you can see I can set a start cell. That's basically where it's going to start reading parameters. You'll probably have noticed in this file, basically column A is my parameter name. Column B is the value. I didn't put any units in there because they're all inches and that's what my file is set up to. I could have added another column for inches or I could have actually just even specified inches in these. It will read that in. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that right now. I've got it set up the way I want. One other thing about that is if I leave a blank row, it will stop reading. So I could actually have a couple different sections of parameters in there and it would stop when it sees a blank row. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and say OK here. You'll see down here at the bottom, it adds a line item for that link and it brings all those parameters in. I can come up here to my plate width, say list parameters. There's my footer width right there. Say done. And really don't see anything here right now, but if I go to Excel, change this value, let's say to six, save it, jump back over to Inventor. I have my little local update flashing here. Now it gets bigger. So now I'm going to go through that process with the other two files. I'm going to go up to my parameters, link, pick out my footer parameter, say open. Now in this case here, I've got post width, length, and height. So this will be, I could type or I can use the list parameters. And then here, post height and update, save this one, jump back to my assembly and get the last one. Now in this case here, when I link the parameters in, uh, when I go to set the values, I need to make them three-eighths of an inch bigger based off the fact that I need to have the tube uh, be a little bit thicker, a little bit wider. So I'm going to come here, I can delete this value, and I can say post length, and I can even say plus 0.375. Do the same thing with here, post width plus 0.375 and then here we'll set this 
actually that I don't need to change at all because I always want that to be three inches. So I don't have to worry about that one. So now let's update all this, save it. I'll close all my extra files out. So now if I go over to Excel, I can change these values. Save it. Saving is the critical thing is it won't actually recognize that there's been a change to that file until I have saved it. So if you're trying this out on your own and you're not seeing that local update over here, try saving your Excel file. Local update, and there we go. So you can see there's an easy way to automate these changes. These are just a small set of parameters. You obviously can get way more advanced. One other kind of key note on the Excel file, it will only read the first sheet. I have seen uh, a couple of customers, they'll make multiple sheets from multiple different calculations and then just use linking between those cells to populate uh, cells on the first sheet. That way it'll end up having them in the right location for Inventor to read. Well, that's all for now. Hopefully you found this information helpful and something you can apply in the near future. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me at my email address there on the screen. And as always, thanks for watching.